For those of you who follow Ubuntu, you'll know that for the last two years or so, they've been working on a brand new installer for their distro. And it is finally time for me to take a look at it for the first time. It is apparently going to be released in the next major version of Ubuntu, which will be 23.04. So they'll be released in uh, uh, April of next year. So it is now on the daily builds and you don't have to do anything special to actually try it, which is how it previously worked. If you wanted to try it, you had to enable it in order to actually try it. Now it is the official installer on the daily build. So I've downloaded the ISO for the latest daily build and we're going to take a look at the brand new Ubuntu installer right now. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now I'm doing this in a virtual machine just simply because it's easier to record that way. But I have entered the try Ubuntu phase simply because I wanted to change the display resolution so that we could see everything that's going on. So here's what you get when you look at the brand new Ubuntu installer. And right off the bat, it does look a little bit different. Not a lot different, but a little bit different. And you get language selection, so we'll select English and hit continue. And then here's where you can still see this kind of in beta because we've we're already trying Ubuntu, so we shouldn't actually have to see this page again. But We'll hit install Ubuntu this time, hit continue. And if you've noticed something, at least so far, it does look a little bit different than the traditional Ubuntu installer. I'll show a picture of that here and in, in, in post that in post. Uh, but in terms of flow of the installer, there's not a lot different here. You choose your language, you choose your keyboard, which we'll do here. By default, those are the right ones. We'll hit continue again. And then it's going to, this is something that's at least a little bit new because usually when there is an internet connection that's already established, which in this case the wired connection already is, they wouldn't show this to you. Usually they'd only show you the Wi-Fi thing if you have Wi-Fi or you need to connect. Uh, this here is something that's a little bit new. So uh, I'll just choose wired connection. We'll hit continue. And this one here looks basically the same as it does in the old installer. So normal installation or minimal installation, you already had those options. And then you can, uh, you can choose to install third-party software, install additional media formats. Interestingly, though, something is different here. It didn't occur to me until I read through those. Neither one of these things say, hey, would you like to install updates? It's interesting because this used to be like one selection and the other selection was install or download updates during installation that option seems to be seems to have been removed and replaced by these which is basically the same thing but so they're separating out codecs and drivers that actually makes sense because it used to be used downloaded the codecs and the drivers together because it was just one checkbox now they're split out so if you want to just install the drivers and leave the codecs out you could or vice versa that's kind of cool Interestingly, again, nothing there about updates, though. So we'll hit continue. Here's the partition manager. I'm going to go ahead and hit something else just because I want to see if there's anything here that's different. We will probably just go back. Uh, that looks basically the same. The one thing is that the, the aesthetic here is just a little bit flatter than it was before. That's the major design changes that I'm seeing. There's not a lot of depth to any of these things. Like the buttons don't look like buttons all that much like you can't other unless you hover over them there's no like shading what i do think though is if you were to go in here and choose the dark mode so let's go ahead to settings if i can type in settings and then we'll change if we change this to dark mode like so does the oh yep the installer actually will go to dark mode uh it doesn't change great but it does at least have a dark mode, which is different than it was before. Other than that, the partition manager here looks basically the same as far as I'm aware that, as it did before. I'm going to go ahead and go back and we'll do the automatic partitioning, but I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything really big, new, and exciting there in the partition manager. The additional features are still here. Interestingly, though, the ZFS option is gone. Now, I don't know if that is just because this is a beta of Ubuntu, or not beta, but like a pre-release software version, and it's just been taken out, or if the ZFS option is going away. I don't know if, which one of those things is true. So there's no ZFS option here. Interesting. Or maybe it's it's perhaps they just use ZFS by default now. Uh, I actually don't know. We're going to find out. So we're going to hit continue, and um, it doesn't say what it's formatting these partitions as. So 
we won't be able to know what the partition is until we're done. So we'll just go ahead and start installing and that's it. It's going to apparently go ahead and install in the background. So you guys it said start installing. The map here is new, or at least it looks better than it did before. The map from the old installer was the one that's been around for a long time and is really hard to click on. I wonder if this one is just as hard to click on. Maybe a little bit easier. And we'll go ahead and hit continue. And then here's the user creation. This has been restyled a little bit. This is not, it's more, it's really odd that they didn't center these text boxes. It just looks with all this space over here. I mean, I would assume that centering it would look better. I'm not a designer, but having it left aligned with a whole bunch of extra space along the side seems like a weird design choice, but that's just me. So we're going to enter a name here. We'll uh, call this Lunar VM and uh, that's a good username, a very strong and complicated password. And then let's just go ahead and hit continue. Why would they ask you to change the theme after you're all the way through the installer? That's a little weird. Why wouldn't they ask you to the beginning of the installer where it would make sense? I mean, we're almost done here. Now it's asking, we'll leave it as dark. And that was the last choice of the installer. That is really weird. I, maybe it's just me, but why wouldn't you ask for the lighter dark selection at the beginning so that you can actually use the dark mode? Because I'm, I mean, unless, of course, that's for after the install. So if we're going to find out if we go into the uh, installed system and it's dark mode, that'd be cool that it remembered that setting. But I don't think that that's what's going to happen. I'd be surprised. I'm going to cut the video here and we'll go look and see. But And then I'll give you my thought, my final thoughts on the installer. Okay, so that took three or four minutes. It wasn't very long. And uh, this screen here is also new. So it's been redesigned. Honestly, again, it's centered, but the user creation page wasn't, which, again, just pointing out, it's pre-release software, so I'm not being too critical, but I, it's just something that I noticed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit restart, and we'll restart into the installed system. And the reason why I'm going in and showing you the installed system is just simply because I'm very interested to find out if it kept that dark mode setting because otherwise I don't understand why it was at the end. And it did, in fact, remember the dark mode setting. <laughs> that is, I mean, it's cool. Okay, don't get me wrong. It's really cool, but it is also really weird because first of all, why not put it at the beginning and still remember it? Because if you put it at the beginning, then the dark, then the installer itself can be dark mode and help people who want to use the dark mode through the installer. So putting it at the beginning means that they can actually use it through the installer. That's the first thing. Second of all, Ubuntu has a welcome screen. Like I, I clicked through it really fast. You get, you didn't see it on camera, but Ubuntu has a welcome screen and uh, you could put that dark mode selector there and it would make more sense to me. But the fact that it remembers it is cool. Uh, it's just, it feels weird to me. I, it, it just does. It's it's just a little weird. So that'd be an, in, I, I'd like to talk to a developer who, who could explain why they put that there where they did. I mean, putting it at the beginning of the installer would make sense. And then having it remember, it would be like cool, right? It'd be an extra feature, something that you wouldn't expect. Uh, putting it at the end of the installer where, you know, you don't get to use it through the installer unless you go do like I did and set the dark mode by default or by man, you know, manually. Um, you know, it's just a little weird. So let's talk a little bit about the overall experience. So first of all, not much here has changed. There's a little bit of design work that they've done. There's still some more, it looks like they need to do, in my opinion, some centering that needs to go on in order to make it design, you know, look and feel nicely designed. Uh, apparently, if you use this on hardware, there are some animations that don't show up if you use a VM. So we didn't get to see those because I was doing it in a VM, but apparently those do exist. Other than that, the design and flow of the installer is mostly the same as it was previously. There are a few extra things, as I pointed out. The network page that shows up there, whether you have Wi-Fi or not, is something that's new. Uh, the user creation page has been redesigned a little bit, and the end screen there has also been redesigned. So those things are completely new. And then we talked about, or we saw the part there where they split out the options for codecs and drivers and took away the option for uh, the updates. So whether or not that's something that's going to come back as they continue to work on this, I don't know. Also, the ZFS option is missing. So that's maybe just something that they haven't put in yet. That's also possible. Cause again, this is very pre-release software. Although they have been working on it for two years. 
I'm just going to put that out there. They've been working on it for two years. So if those are missing features, then, you know, maybe writing and developing it in Flutter has just been more complicated than they expected. I don't know. I'm not a developer. So I'm ve I'd be very curious to talk to a developer and ask them, you know, how the workflow has been, why they decided to actually do this, because for the most part, I don't see that much of improvement from a user's perspective on in you know, in this installer. There has to be back-end improvements that have made this worth, worthwhile. So it'd be really interesting to find out why they've done this and what changes they still are expecting to make. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on the brand new Ubuntu installer, I'd love to hear from you. You can t tell me in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for YouTube and LiberaPay will be in the video description if you'd like to support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Like truly all the appreciation in the world. So thank you so very much again. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.